So uh, what camera kit lens do other than collect dust? <laughs> So as you already seen in the title, uh, tonight I'll be using a kit lens for some astrophotography and I'll go through some basic steps which I usually take. So the first thing I do is to choose a spot where there is not a lot of light pollution and I won't be using any star tracker which makes uh, imaging a nebula uh, even more difficult. The next thing is to choose uh, the correct shutter speed which you can actually calculate and that is by dividing 400 by the length of your focus. Uh, so since my focus is uh, 55 millimeters, uh, that means that I can let the shutter open for around 8 seconds. But if the weather holds up, uh, I'll also try to use this uh, 70 to 300 millimeter lens to shoot the heart and the soul nebula, which at 70 millimeters will give me around 5 seconds of exposure time. But tonight my main focus will be the Orion constellation, on which I'll try to get at least 200 uh, images to give me around 30 minutes of total exposure time. You really want to collect as much exposure time as possible because like I said uh, the nebulas are very faint objects so I would say that 200 images are really the minimum that you want to gather and just so to let you know uh, the images will be stretched quite hard uh, later in the post process uh, now the Orion constellation which I will shoot uh, tonight is quite easy to find in the night sky I did use an app called Stellarium to make sure that later I will find the heart and the soul nebula the app is free to download for the computer but you can also get a mobile version which costs uh, I think around uh, 3 euros or maybe a little bit less and it's a really great app uh, to find uh, targets which you want to photograph and I will uh, also use a cable release so I don't have to press the shutter for uh, each individual image I will adjust my camera each time I take 20 to 30 shots so I keep the Orion constellation in the center of my frame uh, as much as time as possible so I hope I covered everything but if you have any questions just uh, leave them in the comments below now the only thing left to do is to get our images Now we are going to process our images, starting by stacking them. Uh, and for stacking I use Secretor because it's uh, a lot faster than the Deep Sky Stacker. So, uh, so let's open Secretor and import our images by going to Star Images. Uh, find the folder where you have your files uh, saved. Select the first one, hit Ctrl and A to select all and open them. So after we import our files, uh, the base image uh, is uh, automatically selected. And next we have our noise and vignetting images, uh, which are basically uh, noise images are our dark frames and vignetting images are our flats. Uh, but uh, in this case, I didn't bother to, uh, to make any of those. So let's go to the output. Uh, and, uh, and this is where your stacked images will be saved. So let's open. I'm going to make a new document and name the stacked image. Hit OK. Now on the bottom part, uh, I leave almost everything alone, uh, except I enable the high dynamic range by double clicking. And that's basically it, you just uh, hit the start button. Let Secretor do the stacking and this will take a while since I have the 224 images which give me around 30 minutes of total exposure time so after the images are stacked I'll come back and add the image in Photoshop. Ok here we have our stacked image, let's drag it into Photoshop and here I'm not going to bore you with each single step I make uh, but I'm going to show you my main edits which I use on almost all of my night images. So first I'm going to do my main stretch with the curves. So let's go to image adjustment curves. Now I'm going to bring the curve quite high and do a slight bend here. Hit OK. Now let's go to levels. 
and bring the black point right to where the data starts. Careful not to clip it. Hit OK. Now let's go to the levels once again and go through each of the channels. Again be careful not to clip any data. The green I'm going to leave alone. Now let's go to the blue one. And that's probably okay. Now that we have our main stretch done, uh, you can see that the edges are dark and um, and I see some stars being pulled in. So first I'm going to crop the image on 4x5. Here is okay. Now to get rid of the dark edges, let's start by duplicating our layer and we are going to rename it then we are going to copy it again by clicking ctrl and c go to file new and paste it in by hitting ctrl and v hit create this will automatically create the correct size of the image so we're going to paste it one more time ctrl v Merge those two layers. Now I'm going to get rid of some of the bright stars and uh, some of the nebulosity in the image. Using the clone step tool. Make, uh, make sure the hardness is at 0%. And choose an area close to where you want to edit. So I'm going to press Alt, select an area close. I'm just going to go over and you really don't have to be uh, very precise in this case it will just help to even out the image a little bit okay that's good enough now let's go to filter noise dust and scratches And a radius uh, around uh, 60 to 90 is okay, but I think 70 works in this case, so I'm going to hit OK. Now let's go to our main image. <laughs> Select the duplicated layer. Let's go to image. Apply image. Now for the source select the untitled one and the blending mode select to subtract offset 30 is fine usually a value around 30 to 50 works most of the time so hit ok you can then adjust the opacity but basically that gives you a nice even flat image uh, next I'm going to show you how to uh, enhance the local contrast which is in my opinion a very powerful and useful edit let's just go to filter sharpen and unsharp mask a radius around 30 pixels and the amount around 50 hit ok so here you can see the before and after but now we have some problems with the stars so we really need to reduce them and that's actually really simple just go to select color range select the midtones uh, you can try to go with the highlights uh, but that is up to you to try uh, which works better so i'm happy with that and going to hit ok and i'm just going to hide the selection by hitting the ctrl h so the stars are still selected, it's just that the selection is hidden. Now let's go to filter, other and minimum. Set this part to roundness. For the radius I'm going to go 1.5 pixels. Hit OK. And here again is the before and after. So that again leaves us with a little more clean uh, image. And from here you can try to experiment by maybe hitting the Control shift a 
and go to the HSL panel and experiment with uh, some of the sliders. And sometimes I select uh, individual stars with the selection tool and make them uh, a little bit uh, brighter. So let's go to select, modify and expand and let's say around 5 pixels. And now I'm going to go again select, modify and feather them. Uh, let's go have the size so 2.5 okay hide the selection control H image adjustment brightness and contrast so that's really up to your taste but it's really the best for you to experiment a bit. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. I really hope this video will be some help to you. And take care till next time. Thank you. Bye bye.